Today is going to be a fun day. I'm spending the day with one of my best buddies, Dirty Disco Daryl, and I'm here in Old Phuket Town. The scenery, unbelievable. The vibe, spectacular. The food off the charts. So uh, here we are in Old Phuket Town, hanging out with Dirty Disco Daryl. We got these giant menus, and we're going to pick some obscene Shaved ice. Shaved ice desserts and uh, get to know Daryl. I'm going to get the watermelon. Okay, okay, so watermelon and one pineapple. Jordan, your head looks so little here. I just want to squeeze it. Get the pimple. Oh, I'm so sweaty. All right, so the story goes like this. About 14 or 15 years ago, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Mr. Pascal, knows I'm coming to Bangkok and says, hey, I know a guy who goes by the name of Dirty Disco Daryl. And uh, you guys are like two peas in the pod. Mind me, I have to get a big bag of nuts. You are a big bag of nuts. This guy, uh, Daryl's like a brother to me. I've never met somebody I'm so uh, similar to. We have the same taste in just about everything. So as that said, Daryl, 17 years ago, you moved to from New York City, yeah. East Village, yes, to Bangkok. Yeah, actually, no, not East Village, Chelsea. My, my family in-laws have, um, they own some property on 20th and 21st Street uh, to 7th to 8th Avenue, that whole corner where C.L. Rouge used to be Michael Imperioli from the Sopranos, little, you know, French whorehouse looking bar. Your whole background, your family was in the club business, correct? Yes, my, my great aunt Joanne opened the first, like the first ever supper club in New York City called Mystique. Yeah. And it was like filet mignon lobster tails on the first floor. Second floor was like pre-disco but it was like a dance club and third floor was like uh, a swingers club members only where you could suck and fuck and it was predominantly where gay Hollywood went when they didn't want to get fucked by the paparazzi so everyone from Paul Newman and Cher, Bette Midler, Truman Capote was a member. Truman Capote, wow. Yeah, is that crazy shit? That's insane. Here comes our desserts. Moment. Moment. Pineapple shaved ice. This is one of our two desserts. It's pineapple saute. Yeah, look at this. Phuket pineapple is the best. It really is. It's very, very this sweet. Is this is like we're on a day date. Mm. Look at us. We're so close. I've never been this close to you since I know. Why? <laughs> you should see what he does for 500 baht. The shaved ice is incredible. So good, it's uh, The texture is really interesting. It's kind of like fluffy like snow. So fluffy. It has a it has a very cool consistency. Here comes our other dessert. Oh my god, look at this. Man. Wow. That's These the uh, melon, watermelon madness. Melon balls. Man, that's really good. So refreshing. This tastes like um coconut. This doesn't taste like watermelon. This tastes more coconut than but it is coconut. Mm. So good. Like coconut, vanilla, and melon. Right? This place is a winner. So you leave Chelsea and you go you come to Bangkok 17 years ago, where sooner than later you become known as not just Dirty Disco Daryl, but the king of nightlife of Bangkok. Yeah. So what like what's that all about? Like how does that how does one become king of king of nightlife? Jesus. I used to be a record producer, I worked for Atlantic Records, Zoo Entertainment, manage bands, signed so many damn bands. Same same. Never made money off of the fucking royalties because they were always same same. Since I remember when I'm five years old, I was obsessed by Kung Fu, martial arts. I always had to buy a Chinese star or a nunchuck. Chinese star, I love Chinese. Or yeah. Bruce Lee, something, or or a Godzilla toy that mm. the fist shot, the, the fists of Godzilla mm. shot at. I'm five years old, and then uh, you know I got into Asian women and tattooing and. Uh, and now you have it. That's that's what I'm a product of, you know, my whole life. And when I was producing records and not seeing daylight for four days, drinking twelve pots of coffee and amongst other things, yeah. you know, they would all my production, you know, name was, was Dirty Disco Daryl because I had a filthy mouth. Start filming, motherfucker. <laughs> Let's go. What are you waiting for? The new Messiah? And I love disco music. My name's Daryl. So I knew all the nightclub owners and I would do record release parties. I would get paid to do parties yeah, for different yeah, celebrities. Yeah. And the last Monday of every month, you know, I would do a party and make more money than I made off of producing yeah, a record yeah. <laughs> for a month and a half. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of how I segued into the whole promotions thing. I had it all planned. 
I was I met with Sony Music in Thailand. I was maybe going to get into the music business in Thailand. There was a job up to be like president or vice president of Sony Music Thailand. So I thought I was going to be the president of Sony Music in Thailand. You know what I mean? But um, but I got a little bit sidetracked, you know, from the, the women and the atmosphere and the mystique about the whole the whole country. And uh, there wasn't really any Western bars or nightclubs. I mean, they didn't even have fucking vodka in the country. Right. I was the first to bring in some of the biggest celebrities, international DJs. I helped create the whole international DJ boom in Thailand and, and hip hop nights and funk and disco nights. So you injected like American culture Absolutely. Into, into Bangkok. I said, fuck the music business. I could be such a big fish in a little pond right. in, in nightlife because right. no one's doing what I do. So I did the tunnel, I did Mystique, I did Funky Dojo, I did Superfly. I've designed in about 16 years. I think I designed over 20 venues. You spent how many years in Bangkok before moving to Phuket? Phuket. 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 I, um, wow, I, I lived in Bangkok 16 years. And you've been married now? 16 years, and, and I opened a nightclub every year. Every year. For 16, 16 years. years. So, yeah, so now you're like six weeks into the Day of the Dead Club. When I arrived here, uh, it was really just a couple of walls and a dirt floor. It came together fast yeah. and furious. I mean, um, yeah. This was the fastest project I've ever done in, in the history of my work in, in 17 years. Day of the Dead's Twisted Taco Joint and Grill. And it's based on all Mexican gangster mm. style mm. food, like, you know, the Escobar steak taco and narcos nachos and cartel quesadillas. And <laughs> it's an outdoor sports bar, rock and roll bar, uh, Mexican restaurant, taco joint, um, and nightclub. Here's my final question. Yeah. Uh, you're 40. Seven. You're 47. Soon. Soon. Couple About to have a baby. Where do you see yourself in, let's say, 20 years? 20 years. The next probably five years of my life are probably the most crucial, important years that I've ever had. Because with the Day of the Dead brand, I plan on taking it to selective cities in Asia, possibly Hong Kong. You know, I'd like to do this the next five years and then maybe. Uh, open five to ten of them and uh, and have other people run them and, uh, and live a nice life with my wife and kids. Like. Yeah, this has been a big influence on me. Uh, it gives me inspiration and hope. Uh, brings me to Phuket and exploring uh, Southeast Asia. I owe a lot to this guy. So with that said, <laughs> Thank you for listening to my bullshit. <laughs> ไม่มีตำหนิเลย